In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do a, an entire basement step by step. Uh, we're going to hang the drywall, tape and fill it, and then we will texture it using Holy Smooth on the walls and then a standard knockdown for the ceiling. I forget how many total sheets I had. I think it was around 80. Uh, I have 8 uh, foot sheets there and then 10 foot sheets. I like to use the longest sheets as possible. 10 was all I could fit down uh, that window well. Um, if I can, I even like to use 15 foot sheets just so there's less joints. This here is just a walkthrough of the entire project unhung. I do a similar walkthrough at the very end um, showing the entire project completed. It's best practice to hang the ceiling first. Um, I've gotten really good at this. That was a 10 foot sheet, um, but they do make drywall lifts. They just take forever and take so much time. Uh, so I just lift it over my head. Uh, it's extremely important to figure out all your outlets and lights so you can pre-mark them so you know where to cut. You don't want to bury anything in the ceiling. I don't show you exactly how to use a router in this video, I have in other videos, but all the holes that I cut, I use a router uh, for all the outlets and all the boxes and things, and that is the quickest way, so you just have one or two measurements and you can have a perfect cut. When hanging walls, if you noticed, I did the top portion of the wall first end that shorter I rip it so I take because drywall is four foot and then I cut the top off that way the bottom uh, piece of drywall is exactly four foot and then I use a toe jack to lift it into place that makes the seam right at arm's length so when you go to finish it when you tape and fill it is easier so you don't have to bend over and I promise if you're doing a large project like this, this simple technique will just save your back tremendously. As best that you can, you want to try to use full sheets to cover full walls. Like here I used 8 foot sheets, so that was one full piece because you don't want to have butt joints. Same on either side there, I stood the draw the drywall upright so there wasn't a seam on either side. This makes less tape and less fill so the job is just easier. That same exact technique here if you notice that ceiling from both sides is completely one sheet. I believe those were 10 foot. Uh, there I do have a little gap um, but uh, just as best you can, you want to use full sheets so there's no butt joints. When hanging around windows and doors, you never want the seam to be on the uh, parallel right side or left side of the window. You always want that butt joint to be somewhere in the middle like you see there uh, or spanning the entire window. Um, that would just promote cracking if you put a seam there. So you always want to, with doors and windows, do that. If you've noticed, I've left tiny, weird, kind of unfinished uh, areas hung. And the reason I do that, I don't want to cut those weird areas out of a brand new sheet. 
So I just continue and leave those blank and just continue until I uh, hopefully get a piece of scrap that would fit in those areas. This just saves um, a lot of money so you don't have to waste sheets. Most of the time I use a router to cut all my boxes and things out. But when it comes to a bathroom or kitchen and you have that plumbing sticking out, you need to pre-mark it and pre-cut it when you install it. Again here with the ceiling, I use the same technique, so that is a full sheet. I think that was uh, just under a 10 foot uh, sheet. And really, reducing your butt joints will save you so much time and you'll get a better product uh, when it comes to finishing. Just like this window, I covered the entire window and then I cut it out. By not having a seam anywhere in that window, it will just help with cracking and I don't have any butt joints. I have been hanging drywall a long time and have cracked uh, many pieces of drywall. I will put it on my head like that and it just breaks down the middle and then kind of sandwiches me and it's very frustrating. I didn't break any on this job and I haven't broken any in a long time, but it's just an art. You know, I can do up to 10 foots. Uh, over my head, but it definitely is an art and just don't get frustrated if one cracks on you and kind of squishes you. This room had the most butt joints and if you noticed I never have multiple butt joints in parallel. I always stagger them so they're um, uh, kind of opposite from each other. Again, because butt joints don't finish that well, or they're harder to finish, so you just want to make it easier on yourself by kind of staggering them. So this I'm going to go ahead and fill all the random weird areas and I'm doing this with mostly scrap pieces uh, in which m most people probably would have thrown away or something or cut a brand new sheet to fill this but I've saved a bunch of money by uh, just using these scrap pieces for this reason. This is why I leave those weird areas undone until the very end. I really enjoy hanging. It can, once you kind of get in the rhythm of it, uh, you really can just kind of stop thinking and it, it really is quite relaxing just to kind of just go to town on it and just watch the progress. It, it really is relaxing um, to do this. Here I am wrapping, uh, these are uh, wrapped entryways. So you have to put a small bit of drywall on the inside of it. If it's a door, uh, like a hanging door, you don't need to put drywall there. I'm only five foot eleven, so I can't quite reach the top screws. Uh, so I always leave that lot, that top layer of screws till the very end when I'm hung. 
So that's what I do in each room. I, I just go around with my benches and just screw it off. Uh, then I did uh, prep for pre-fill, where you kind of take a knife and clean everything up. Uh, and then you pre-fill. So that's what I've done. I've screwed and then I've cut it and now I am pre-filling. So basically what pre-fill is, is any just large gaps, anything, if you can see light or a gap, you just shove mud in there and wipe it really tight. Pre-fill is one of the most important things to prevent cracking. Because what would happen if I didn't pre-fill some of these gaps and just taped right over it, there would be an air pocket underneath, and over time, just through vibration and movement, it would eventually crack. But by pre-filling, it fills that so there's no air, it's all solid. And it just does a huge wonder for cracks. It just, basically, it'll never crack. Then we're going to tape right on top of our pre-fill. I use a banjo uh, to tape. There's something called a bazooka. I just have never purchased one, and I just, for the size of jobs I do, uh, I just probably won't end up buying one. But the banjo works really well. Um, you always want to do your flats first. So what that means is your butt joints and your recessed joints first. Your inside corners uh, you want to wait a couple hours or even the next day to do, uh, just so you don't mess up your flats. When doing your inside corners, it's really important. I'm using specialty tools here, but even if you don't have those, but it's really important that you give a very sharp, clean finish uh, so you don't see that tape. Basically, these tools are kind of doing two or even three layers all in one. Because um, basically, I'm only going to have to go over that one more time to completely hide that seam. Uh, so while it's still wet, this step is very crucial. Just make those inside corners beautiful. Really take your time and make them look and f uh, beautiful and covered. With all of my exact corners, I take even extra time to put an additional layer of mud so each one of those points uh, is just very crisp and pristine, uh, even on this very first layer. The customer here chose to use bullnose for their corner bead. Uh, doing bullnose, you really have to take your time um, and put it on because it's easy to put on crooked. So you see me kind of adjust it with a six inch knife uh, to check the fill. All bead will eventually need at least three coats, if not more. Uh, the goal for bead is that you have a flat surface. You don't want an indented bowl. Um, it, it just looks bad and it's just not done properly. So this is obviously the very first coat. And I believe this one I may have done four coats on all of the bead. I'm using here a flat uh, box. I believe that one is a 10 inch box. Uh, you could certainly do this by hand. Um, you kind of see me do by hand on the butt joints there. Um, that tool, though, just saves a ton of time. Um, but this is just the very first finishing coat that I'm putting on.
it's pretty traditional to wrap all windows with square bead. Uh, I prefer square bead in general, and I just think it looks fantastic. Uh, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm just wrapping the windows with square bead, uh, taping them. Uh, I prefer the yellow tape. I can just see it. The white tape is sometimes hidden. Uh, the yellow, you just keep going until you don't see tape. I'm moving right into the second layer for the bead, and that's what this is. I'm now going to start using my 12 inch box and this is the second flat coat finishing layer. When doing the texture wholly smooth on the walls, you can do three fill coats. When I do my wholly coat texture, I do my third coat on the butts as I'm doing the Holy Smooth texture. Holy Smooth is a very, very cool looking texture and it just hides so many imperfections and mistakes, uh, if any. So you really can, on the walls, go very quickly with your fills uh, because this texture is just so fantastic and covers. Um, how you do the holy smooth texture, you kind of just kind of get a blob on your knife and just wipe it really fast. And it kind of creates kind of a skip trowel kind of look. And then you just keep wiping um, and you eventually get that look. If you just watch me long enough, it, it'll kind of make sense. If you noticed, well, I'm doing the texture on the walls, I did an additional layer on the ceiling. With a standard knockdown, the ceiling has to be a flatter finish uh, because you can see through that texture onto the flat wall. And while I'm doing the holy smooth on the walls, I do an additional final coat on all the bead. This holy smooth texture is probably one of my favorite um, parts of the entire job. Uh, I just think it's really cool looking and it's just very relaxing. Um, I could do this all day. I, it really is a lot of fun.
this particular room, I really kind of uh, show how I'm doing that additional uh, layer on the bead while I'm doing the Holy Smooth. Uh, if you kind of see, I outline the bead and then I go right on top of it with the Holy Smooth. And I believe that is the fourth layer on the bead, but basically you just want to keep going until it's flat. If I remember right, I did all of the walls on the same day, and I think it took six hours to do all the walls, so it goes fairly quickly for the size of an, the area you have. All right, I am finally starting up ceiling texture, and this is a knockdown, and it is so much fun to do. You take your two hawks, you put a thin layer of mud on the hawks, you stomp them together, which creates kind of peaks, and you place them on the wall, and then uh, shortly after you wipe them, uh, and it creates that standard knockdown look. I do have other videos that slow down and show you uh, very slowly on how to do this, uh, but there'll be enough footage of this, it might make sense. Pretty interesting, isn't it? I just think this is so cool to watch and it is so much fun to do. It really is very cool. If you notice on the ceiling, I do a quick sand before I do the texture. And again, because I'm trying to get a extremely flat wall before I put that texture on because you can see through it onto the flat wall. All right, next we are ready to sand. Before I use my power sander on the ceiling and walls, I take my six inch knife and an angled sander sponge and I clean up all of the corners because my power sander can't effectively get into all the corners. So I hand sand all the corners and I really take my time so it's a really clean, crisp line in there to make painting easier.
The walls are fairly dried. I did them the day before this. But the ceiling, I actually did the ceiling the same day as I'm sanding. And this takes very special touch and very careful touch because it's a wet sand that if you haven't done it before, maybe wait a day before you sand it because you can easily mess it up. Wet sanding is extremely difficult and it takes just a special touch. The very last step to sanding is take a flashlight and go over every inch of that wall and make sure there's no imperfections. So I take a hand sand uh, in one hand and then a flashlight and then I go over every bit of that wall and just touch up anything that I missed or anything that needs touched up. And that completes the entire project. Start to finish, we hung we pre-filled, or we prepped pre-fill, and then we pre-filled, and then we taped, and then we did the bead, then we did first coat, second coat, third coat, all along filling the bead as well, and then we did holy smooth on the walls, and then we did fourth coat on the ceiling, sanded the ceiling, added the standard knockdown on the ceiling, and then sanded the heck out of the whole job. But pretty interesting, I do another full walk around of the entire job. I did this whole project completely by myself, and it was pretty fun to do.